Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Chugga Conroy and Masaya Nella to discuss the reveal trailer of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So let's get started. All right, so we already had X. We thought that was a sequel. No, we are getting an actual sequel to the original Xenoblade. At least that's what it seems like by the title and by everything else we've seen so far. But I gotta ask, Emil, what'd you think? Holy wow, 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 it looks so cool. Flying whales and giant trees and that music. Yo, oh my God. I think he's excited. Just a little. <laughs> maybe, maybe slightly. I can't tell. No, Sorry, I can't I either. Think. It's so ob ob obtuse. <laughs> very subtle, very subtle. Subtle excitement. <laughs> yeah, just a little. He's, I it's mean, a golf in, clap, in golf clap. <laughs> uh, in case you, it wasn't clear, I could enunciate a little bit more and just kind of, you know, make sure I'm not laying it on too thick, you know? Oh, obviously. So, just uh -huh. a little excited. What about you, Masei? Are you as excited as Emil or just, eh? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think maybe I'm a little bit excited for this. <laughs> Very excited! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm right there with flying you. whales and giant trees, and you're just as excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, all, all of that. <laughs> also, giant cats. Giant cats, giant trees, perhaps sword women. <laughs> maybe if our analysis and is cat correct. Women. This too. This and true. cat women. Yeah, just it has it all. It's funny because I'm coming at this perspective like when we were talking about the build up, the lead up to Xenoblade Chronicles X, uh, Emil, it was always this weird sort of thing where I've never played the original, but I was excited for X and what it could do, and then I played it, and it immediately became my favorite game on the Wii U. And I'm now legitimately excited for Xenoblade Chronicles 2, even though I've still yet to play the original, hoping to fix that pretty soon. Derek, shame. I know, I know. Now, to be fair, you haven't beaten X, so... You okay, can't shush, shame me that shush, too much. We don't go there. <laughs> but I played through most of it. I'm on you chapter have been 11. Right before the last chapter for like a year. <laughs> I know. I know. But at least I played it. That is true. I'm there. That is true. I, I played I the original. Two complete playthroughs in the time it's taken you. That's you, shush. though. <laughs> That's like, you're insane when it comes to that kind of thing. So, yeah, we have. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 coming and obviously it seems to be an actual sequel and we were always wondering when we were doing our initial analyses and discussions about X how it was weird that a lot of the original staff weren't there they had new, mu new music people they had a different character designer like the only thing that seemed to be there was the ex executive director I think it now makes a lot of sense that they just split off into two teams one handling X one handling two and how does that make you feel, uh, Emil, the fact that we might just have two separate ongoing series of Xenoblade Chronicles X and the original Xenoblade? Well, I, I think it makes sense because Monolith split off into two separate development studios. They have one in Kyoto and one in Tokyo now. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that they would have two really big projects going on at the same time like this and that they have the intention of releasing games more often. Because I was thinking that we probably only get like a game out of them like once every five years or so, but with them expanding the company, it seems like a move that makes a lot of sense. It could have side series going on. Um, one thing I find weird, though, is that I didn't think this was their other project. They posted a job listing with concept art for a 3DS game that we still have seen nothing about. Even to this day, it's this like weird picture that has like all these like trees with noses and like stuff like that. It's really weird. What? <laughs> yeah, it's like these trees with faces and they have like long wooden noses. Like they showed this piece of concept art off like years ago, and I thought that's what the other studio was being formed for was they were doing a big RPG on the 3DS. But no, I'm very surprised that it's this. Um, but yeah, more games more often. I don't really need to say anything more than that. It's good. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be quite a treat. Definitely. What, what about you, Masaid? Is it? excites you that you have basically two separate series of Xenoblade games? I think it'll be really interesting. Like, I, I, I'm very, I'm really excited because more games, like, like what we've already said, but it's just, I'm more relieved that it seems like they're going with a more story-driven experience for, like, the main, <laughs> the main series part of it, and X was, like, more of a kind of more of a spin-off. I, I don't know if I'd really go that far, though, but I, I appreciated it for what it was, but it didn't really feel like the original, so I'm really happy that there seems to be two different lines going at the same time. It's interesting to see just how different, because I've seen a lot of people that were big fans of the original not be as impressed with X because the story to them wasn't as strong, and agreed. The, the, those, like, the main chapters, if you only look at the main chapters of X, it's not as strong of a story. It's very, almost, it's almost kind of simple in a way. Um, but I love 
the character development and all the side missions and stuff that X brought to the table. So it's going to be interesting going from that kind of like just spread out, take, go at your own pace type of thing uh, with an undefined main character to a very defined main character, a set, uh, you know, set party, not 20 different people that all have their own stories going on and seeing what they do. And I, I'm pretty sure we're all, it's pretty safe to say that we're not going to be seeing scales uh, into. True, true. I like um, the in X, the, it just focused on different things. It, it's really mm. strong in its own way, and I love the exploration. I love the world. The exploration. I love some of the characters. <laughs> Shut up, Emil. And it was just, it was really, it was a really different experience, and not something that I was really expecting out of out of Xenoblade as a whole. It reflected some of the same same things, but it went a completely different route. So I, I don't know. I I liked it, but it definitely wasn't the same thing as what I would have been gunning for initially. Mm -hmm. that, that's how I feel. I, I think that it depends on how important story is to you in video games, because I think X is a lot more about the characters, a lot more about the world, a lot more about exploration and combat exactly. and things like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas, also customization, because you can customize just so many things about the <laughs> game. Your house, your scale, your character themselves, your voice actor, your personality, just so many things. Mm -hmm. Whereas the original is a lot more, it is a more linear game where it's not like you can go anywhere you want, anytime you want, and there's stuff for you to do. Um, so it is a bit more linear by design, but it is a lot more focused on the story. I'm with you, Derek, on loving the cast of characters in X, where even though it is a little bit big and it is a little bit much at times, I do think the character interactions are fantastic. And it really hurts me to see people say, like, oh, the characters are so bland and, like, they never develop or anything. And I see these people that have only played the story chapters where they just rushed through the story and didn't pay any attention to the side activities. Because I'm just like, guys... The character development is in the side activities. Like, play the affinity missions. Like, they're fully voice acted. What more do you want? <laughs> they expand on the story. Like, they felt like part of the story to me because it just it slowly expanded. And they even they did such a good job of keeping things that were revealed later hidden from you until certain points. It was so brilliantly structured to me with X. And you know, obviously, this is about two. <laughs> One of the things I do want to mention is that, is it tough for you guys, and I know you haven't finished it, Masse, but I'm sure you're aware by now that X ends with basically a sequel bait. And is it rough to go from the sequel bait to the sequel to the original, which I hear, I, I, obviously I don't know that, but I, I feel like that had its own story sort of wrapped up pretty neatly. Yeah, the original, it, it does have a few lingering questions, though, but there's, um... There, there's a uh, like books that they released in Japan that answer a lot of those questions. Um, the original is kind of left on a note where, yeah, it could continue. Yeah, there could be more stories within that world, but it, by and large, it wraps up nicely and doesn't really need a continuation outright. Where it could have one, but it's not needed. X though, very much like that's a game that. The way it ends does frustrate me a little bit, and it's a game that I hope gets a sequel, though, because I feel like there's a lot of untapped potential there, and, like, you could tell a very interesting story with the characters and a world that they've put together. It's just that the first game, presumably first game, didn't really do that or go that direction. At the same time, we're not entirely, like, 100% sure if this Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is actually a sequel, like a direct sequel. It might not be that at all. It might just be like a continuation of that style of game and that general feel. That's entirely possible as well because, I mean, the only connection we see on any kind of type of major scale, uh, scale is the returning enemies and the fact that the main character who we think is, is named Rex in Japanese wields a Monado-like sword. Yeah, there there are connections and there are very similar themes in it, like like you said, the enemies and the sword and a uh, heavy emphasis on like um, what seems to be mechanical and nature, but I, I haven't really seen anything thus far that for sure links Xenoblade, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 with the original, so I, I don't know if it would be f a fair comparison to say like, oh, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X is getting, it had the sequel bait and automatically assume that one is getting the same sort of deal. Hmm. I don't know. Well, let's go into the story a bit here, because the, the one thing we do know about the game is that the main 
thrust of the story is that Rex is trying to reach Elysium with, we believe, Homura, who seems to be able to transform into the Monado-like sword that he wields, because if only because of the, her coloring and the um, core at her chest, which resembles the uh, life pods from the uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X, and of course... It's a reference to Xenogears and Xenosaga! <laughs> Don't you know anything? <laughs> exactly. Sorry, oh, just those boy. comments. So <laughs> many comments. Uh, pointing that out. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Pretty sure it's just like a cute little, hey guys, and you know, obviously the life pods looking like the Zohar in those games didn't actually amount to anything. It's just like a visual reference to know that this is still a Xeno or Zeno game. <laughs> it's like, guys, I, I know that the shops in X, like uh, in the NLA commercial district, I know that like they're the, the like they're, they'll be like so and so's pizza, and it's like a character from Xeno Saga is the name, and then there's like a boutique where it's like so and so's boutique, and it's a character from Xeno Gears. Like, I know things like that though, but it's like they're just little references. They don't exist in the same universe. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Those were all handled by completely different companies too. Like Xeno Saga was with Namco, Xeno Gears was, was was with SquareSoft at the time. So I'm pretty sure they can't fully do that. It has to be like winks and nods to their earlier work, but. Again, what do you think of this plot? Is it does it work for you that there I mean, I like the idea of like here's what we're trying to do. This is like here's what we need to do. Now we got to figure out how to do it. I think that's a good starting place. Uh the setup for the story uh definitely has a lot of potential. I think you would definitely it would definitely explore the relationship between those two characters and I'm definitely sure that if the Monado can be shrouded in mystery once, it can definitely be shrouded in mystery again within a different world, different context, different things like that. So I, I think it has potential. Of course we don't really know a whole lot about the story. I mean, I think like the most concrete details we have is oh hey bunnets are returning oh hey tyrkins are back maybe there's chain <laughs> attacks like i they they i've noticed that monolith gives away very little detail on the story cuz before x came out you saw so much of the prologue cutscenes and just nothing beyond that i remember that when i reached nla for the first time i'm like okay i'm completely blind from here on out and that's usually how it goes it's a good feeling though to just be able to just they don't tell you much you got that basic setup and you're like okay get me pulled into this world and yeah i have a feeling two is going to do it too i wish the rest of nintendo would do that though because like tell me if i'm wrong like really do okay but i feel like every nintendo game that has come out in like the last three or four years here's what they do they release a first trailer that tells you nothing about the game and everyone's like are we supposed to be excited about this because <laughs> this tells us nothing and like i don't know like nearly enough to know whether or not i'm going to like this or whether i'm going to be interested so they do that as their initial reveal. Then you hear nothing about the game for like six months <laughs> until the game is only a couple months away. Then they drop a second trailer and the trailer is actually exciting. And now people are like, oh man, I have to get this. I have to get this. It's so good. So then people are excited. And then a week before the game drops, they do like a Nintendo Direct or they release a trailer on the game that spoils every single tiny little thing in the entire game. <laughs> Wasn't Xenoblade 1 like that too, though? Like, I remember one of the trailers being really, really spoiler heavy. Yeah, the original Xenoblade had a very spoilery trailer when it was released in North I America remember that. and Europe. There was that. Super Mario 3D World's a prime example of what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. of how they... Basically, the first trailer, nobody was excited. The second trailer, everyone was excited. And then, like, a week before the game, they reveal everything in it. The Pokemon games, they do that. Yeah, where I was just about to say. There's, like, four Pokemon that haven't been publicly announced by the time the game actually releases. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 an unfortunate trait that they're doing it. Fortunately, so far, they're not doing it to Breath of the Wild. Thank God. <laughs> There's yeah, okay. true. Still true. plenty of mystery to Breath of the Wild. I think that's the one exception I can come up with, though. <laughs> so far... Keywords. Uh, that's true. <laughs> I hope they change it, though, because it gets so frustrating how you see spoilers everywhere, and people are like, well, it's in the trailer. It's not a spoiler. I'm like, I'm avoiding the trailers because the trailers tell you everything. Mm -hmm. And I have no choice but to look at it because they're releasing trailers, so... I'm so sorry. Thanks, Nintendo. <laughs> I, I, I am so sorry. It was like, I... I went back, I, I've, lately what I've been doing is I've been ignoring trailers completely for like the six months before a game comes out, and then I go back and watch them after I beat the game, and I'm just like, they tell you everything, like, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire spoiled the Delta episode before the game was even oh, out. Oh, that was so dumb, and this, of course, Sun and Moon spoiled Red and Blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And all that, so that was just, ugh. 
Anyway, but yeah. hopefully... Sorry, got derailed. I just really <laughs> needed to say that, that I hope they don't go that direction with marketing Xenoblade 2, because it's been a trend that I've noticed in most Nintendo-published games that I haven't liked. Yeah, we'll, I will see what Nintendo does with this, because I think we can safely declare at this point that Xenoblade is becoming one of their premier games, or sure. at least RPGs. Like, Nintendo, I think, has a lot of confidence behind this series now. They're getting a lot of mileage out of buying out Monolith back in, like, 07. That's for sure. <laughs> Again, I think I've said this multiple times, but it amazes me how, you know, this is a game that we had to fight to get in North America, and now it's one of their biggest things. It's like, you know, Nintendo, if you would listen sometimes... This stuff would happen more often. Once in a while. It reminds me of that tweet that was going around the other day where it's like, 2007, Fire Emblem is about to be canceled forever. 2017, Fire Emblem is coming to everything you own, including your refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, it, it's really crazy, but what are your hopes for the story of Xenoblade Chronicles 2? Or are you just sort of like, you know what? I'm just going to go in blind and see what they tell me and just enjoy the ride. Plot twists. All of the plot twists. But no, but seriously, um, I feel like the original Xenoblade has conditioned me to imagine plot twists out the wazoo for whatever they have coming up. Because I, I even X had some really good ones that I've seen, and I haven't finished it, of course, so I don't know what di what direction it'll take. But it, I've I've noticed that Monolith really does have that tendency to jerk you around and lead you to believe one thing, only to completely turn it around on its head and introduce something else entirely. So, um, even even with Xenoblade Chronicles two, I, I watch I watch the trailers and I hear what they're saying, and it's like at this point, even though I'm very excited for the plot and what direction it might go in, I'm thinking like maybe. Elysium is going to be evil. <laughs> it's going to be the main bad guy's, like, home base, you know? I I'm expecting things like that. By the way, I'm calling it right now that that's going to happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if, there if there's anything I really want from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, it's more of that. It's more... I, I want really, really heavy story. I could see that happening. I really could. Just because, basing, of course, most of it on X and some of the twists and turns that... that uh, that I did experience within Xenoblade with the, the, the few hours I did play and see what kind of like crazy things they do. And the thing I like about Monolith Soft's writing, at least recently, uh, with the Xenoblade games, is that they'll have these twists and then you look back on them and they make complete sense. Like it's not just yep. we're just going to twist it to twist it. It's a twist that they completely set up. And I think that's why, you know, I, we're going to be pretty active looking like, what's, what are they going to do? What are they going to try to pull this time? Hmm. Yep. <laughs> what gameplay changes are you hoping to see? Like, what enhancements? Do you want to see some of the stuff introduced in X uh, brought into 2 as well? I'd be very happy if Skells weren't in the game. It's not that I don't like Skells. It's just Ooh, that sorry. I'm kind Okay. It's not that I don't like Skells, it's just that I think the idea of a Skell itself is good. It's just that after I got the flight, after after I got the ability to fly, I didn't enjoy exploring the game world as much because there wasn't as much mystery and as much like, you know, I really have to try to get there. I felt, so I'm kind of okay with maybe like animal mounts being more of a thing this time around, but I do think the idea of having mounts in general is a good one that I hope returns. Just maybe not the way that they did it in X. I think. At the same time, though, in X, it was mainly about the exploration, and um, the world was a heavy, heavy factor on the entire game itself. Whereas, if Xenoblade Chronicles Two is more on, is more focused on the story, maybe having maybe having a flying mount or like like something similar to Skells might fit in a little bit more and not feel like a shortcut. In okay. that sense, I could see that in Xenoblade Chronicles X. Since it was so exploration heavy and so much about the world, I, I do agree that it felt a lot more adventurous and a lot more a lot more involved when you were on foot rather than exploring like the skies. It's it's not so much that, it's just that when I first okay, for me what it was is that exploring the world on foot was really adventurous and interesting and you had to think about a lot about how you were gonna get where you gotta go. Once you got a skell, it was so cool seeing all the places that you could visit and all the things that you couldn't do for like the last 20 hours that you can do now. 
that was nice, but it just, after a while, the novelty kind of wore off, I felt, and I kind of wish that it was, like, more restricted in how often I could use it, because I feel like it did remove a lot of the mystery from things, but if the game is more linear by design and is more story-driven, then I guess that wouldn't really be a concern. Yeah, it, it, it might end up being more, more of a straight shot, so it'll be more of a convenience thing, perhaps? I don't know, of course, but... That could be. I honestly, I, I have a feeling scales will will remain exclusive to the X series, and they'll just maybe have something similar, but nothing exactly like scales in oh, yeah. two and any other future sequels that might happen or not. I'm not sure. Having mounts to quickly get around though is definitely a good thing. Like the, having that large cat to ride around, it's not, and it's not going to mess up your exp uh, exploration unless. Unless that thing can climb trees, which maybe it can, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, sh it probably just serves to be faster for you in order to get to different places. But I also just think we remember, remember that there was a lot of, like, teleportation points. It was very easy to get around in the original Xenoblade. Like, you could easily go back to various places because of just so many warp points and there was no need for the, like, amount or anything like that. Or am I misremembering? Misremembering, mis excuse me. No, you can, no, you can fast travel a lot. around to wherever you want. I wonder how, how, if that system's going to change at all if these mounts are being introduced. That's actually a good point. I didn't think of it from that angle. There is also the fact that fast travel points are only every so often, so getting to the specific area that you need, it would still make sense to have a mount to get there quicker. That is a good point. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Or, or to reach you, it for the first time. Yeah, you would have to reach places for the first time to actually teleport there anyway, so... Yeah, that's very true, and I remember getting to, I think I think it was Guar Plains, one of the big, op the first really big open area, and like yeah. just seeing how expansive that was and getting around, I was like, you know, after a while, Mount would be nice, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> uh, there's just so much here. It's going to be interesting to see uh, exactly what they do, but as far as combat... We seem to know that chain attacks will be back, and I'm not overly familiar with chain attacks, of course, because of my lack of experience with the original Xenoblade, but are you are you happy with that fact that chain attacks are returning? I, I am, definitely. I do think that they might need to rebalance a few things, because topple locking has been something that's been very overpowered in a lot of games, so it might need a little bit of rebalancing here and there, and I definitely would welcome a bit of a change to it if they were to kind of rebalance how they work, but... I do like chain attacks a lot, and I'm happy that they have a chance of returning. I don't mean to be, like, the skeptic here. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like every time something gets brought up, I'm like, no, that's not happening. No. You can't just let me have something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to take all of your joy away. But um, I'm not entirely sure if they're coming back for real, because um, I, I did I did notice that the Tyrkins are back, and their main gimmick in the original was that they could use... Um, chain attacks, and they had they had um, they were more cooperative than other enemies. But I, I'm not sure if that's really enough to say with certainty that we're going to have something even similar to chain attacks. There might be a replacement or some sort of um, some sort of alternate feature. Mm -hmm. But if it does come back, then great. Like, like Emil said, I, I hope that it's rebalanced and <laughs> topple locking is addressed. If that's if topple or break is even a thing in the game, but I don't know. Wait, I, I, I would have to wait and see a little bit longer to see, like, um, what that what that feature would be like. It's totally open for being retooled or differentiated in some way, and uh, obviously, I'm I'm going kind of blind into this about what what it could do or whatnot, but I, I, I have a, enough trust in Monolith Soft at this point that I feel like whatever they come up with is like, you know, as long as it's not obviously garbage, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get the hang of it and enjoy it uh, to a degree, so... I have I have a lot of faith in Monolith as well, and it's like, um, I don't doubt that they could make something that is very detailed and very, very um, effective, but one of my worries is that Personally, just just me. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's a bad system or anything, but um, Overdrive in X was very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never I never quite got the hang of Overdrive in in X, and I'm I, it makes me a little bit 
a little bit shaky because I, I got the hang of chain attacks in the original super quickly, super, like, it, it wasn't com complex. It was just simple enough that I could really get a good grasp on it, but maybe, maybe if it had a little bit more detail, but not to the extent of X, because X was just, X was very like, what is what is this even doing for me? <laughs> if you want me to explain it to you, I could. <laughs> I know you could, Emil. It's a matter of it actually sticking in my head. <laughs> Things don't always stick too well to my brain. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if that's good or not. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly not. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of curious because we've been introduced to four characters so far, and if the theory that uh, Homura and Hikari, who is the blonde-haired girl, can become Monado-like weapons or those swords or whatever they may be, may be, we've seen a party of three, definitely, because we've also seen uh, Nia, the cat girl, but we don't know if Nia gonna actually gonna, is actually going to use another Monado or if Hikari is being used by somebody else. Are we going to have multiple Monados or is it just like in our party? But that also sort of lessens the variety that you have, unless Monados can take the form of completely different weapons now, because uh, you know there's more than just one type of blade. I, I like the potential of what they could do with it, or the different aspects the story could take if these girls can transform into different things, and so that they're kind of part of your party, but also not in a traditional way, since they are the weapons. So how are they going to handle that? These characters that are Monados, I think that they could be shrouded in mystery. You'd learn a lot more about them. Maybe there's, I don't know, a factory mass-producing Monado somewhere. I really don't know. <laughs> that'd be kind of... Yeah, I don't that'd know. That'd be kind of sketchy. It's really weird, though. Like, I, I guess that would like kind of bring... I'm going to go to Walmart and buy me a Monado girl. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay I don't really this. have a whole lot to, to speculate on here. It's just... Mm -hmm. it, it really is also just a theory of ours that the yeah. girl is the Monado. So we don't really know for sure. It's completely unproven. It's just based on dialogue and potential and visual cues and stuff like that. But I'm I'm used to making crazy theories and uh, calls and all that stuff. So I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that I think they are the actual Monado. I I think there's enough evidence to at least point in that direction. Maybe not completely conclusively, but I'm going to take that extra step and say that, yes, it is. And who knows, I could be completely wrong. It's been known to happen. <laughs> um, but we, we, we will definitely see. Uh, as far as the mass-producing Monados, I am very curious about that scene on that I assume takes place on that huge uh, ship uh, where we saw the bazaar and whatnot. And we also, that's where we saw the Turkins and we saw the, like, those power cells in the background glowing in the same color. Now, granted, that could be a complete coincidence, but I'm also wondering, okay, what is that for? Why are there enemies here? What's going on? I don't know. I, I like the mysteries that they're putting forth uh, that we're sort of spotting within this trailer. I think the idea of a partner system with these people becoming weapons is actually a really cool idea, but it's not something that I feel like is entirely original, but that makes me feel like it's very likely to happen as well. Like, um, as much of a negative Nancy I've been on speculation <laughs> and things through this whole discussion, I, I feel like this particular one is extremely likely, and it's not the first time that I've seen... Like I said, it's not the first time that I've seen things of this nature. Like, um, the stylistic changes of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has been much more geared towards kind of the animu and the <laughs> cutesy, type, um, cutesy type art. And it, it makes me think of a lot of, different, um, a lot of different shows in anime that I've seen that have had similar, similar themes. Like Soul Eater and um, Gu uh, Guilty Crown, I think, had it as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure, but it... it I, there's a few different animes that follow that uh, idea. It does feel, I mean, even beyond the character designs, it does have that kind of anime flavor. The outright screaming, the the charges. The, the, there's a lot of tropes on display mm -hmm. here, and even that page cat of girls. The, the cat girls, and even that page <laughs> of the script where it's taking place at a bath. That is True. anime 101. <laughs> you know? True. This You're just scary. missing a high school. Exactly. You need to, you need to have a, either a beach scene, a hot spring scene, or both. <laughs> One of the t in, in a typical anime. <laughs> At the same time. Yeah. And you also got to have like a board in the wall between the boys and the girls, like being loose and. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, it, it's 
totally possible, especially when you have one of the girls commenting on how nice one of the other girls' bodies are. We're going anime here, and <laughs> does I, I guess some people have put, uh, expressed concern about it, like, oh no, I do not want it to go that style, or I, they don't like that style. Are you guys concerned that it might change Xenoblade up from what, uh, what you already like? Is it going to be too different, or is it just sort of a new addition? I don't think it is something that I'm overly worried about because I think what made the what made the two existing games so good is that they're not all serious all the time. They do make fun of themselves. They do have legitimately really funny jokes. There's like good humor in there. There's you know there's goofy character interactions like um, I know you didn't get very far in the game though, but Ryan and Ricky together are amazing. Ryan <laughs> and Charla are great too. There's a lot of really funny character interactions like that, and I could see a scene like that being used for comedy and just like there's always comedic scenes in Xenoblade like it never is a 100% super serious it does have a lot of really good humor in it and I think that one scene doesn't really confirm that it's just going to be like you know typical generic anime or anything like that I think that it's just going to be like a less serious scene that could be used for comedic effect because that's really standard in the series and it'd be interesting to see what they could do with it that's a fair point I I I'm not entirely concerned. I can definitely see some of the things that people have been saying. Like I, I've seen a lot of a lot of people expressing that, oh, the characters don't really match the backgrounds as well as they would have liked because the backgrounds are much more mature looking, for lack of better words. It's a lot more detailed and a lot more a lot more realistic than what I'd expect the characters to look like. Like mm -hmm. with, with I'd expect with these character designs, I'd expect more of a cell shaded more cartoony, more anime look. And I, I do see the clash in visual style, but at the same time, that's just a matter of getting used to it and playing it. I'm sure, I'm sure after playing the game and getting into it, it would not bother me as much as like people seem to assume mm -hmm. right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And al also, also to be fair, Xenoblade is not anywhere near like new to being criticized over stylistic things. <laughs> Xenoblade Chronicles 1 had the whole this looks like a PS1 game and Xenoblade, uh, Xenoblade X has the whole hey their eyes look weird, their lips look weird, everything looks weird, why are these characters <laughs> so wonky and so I, I don't think it's anything new or to be concerned about because both of those games came out really really good in their own rights and I I think the stylistic changes are going to be minimally um, impactful. Mm -hmm. Besides that, to me, like I'm a massive Tales fan. I love Tales games, and it reminds me of Tales. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is totally I'm, I'm up okay your with this. Yeah. So it's not to love there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm with you. I don't mind this style. I, I think it looks good. I didn't. I didn't even notice the clashing so so much. But I'm also not as visually inclined as some people where it's like oh no it's clashing so much like it has to be really bad for me to notice it and we also only saw what a minute and a half of footage and that's true very few of it was spent uh you know looking at the vistas and whatnot so i, I there's definitely not enough to judge based on that at least in my opinion we need to have mm -hmm. more of an extended clip and i'm sure we'll get that uh the, i guess the big question here is do you guys think this could come out in 2017 in each territory? Because for my money, I can see it coming out in Japan. It's not coming out until 2018 to, for U.S. and everybody else. <laughs> I think it shows a lot more confidence that they're saying it for every territory. Because individually, NCL in Japan said it's coming out in 2017. Nintendo of America said in America it's coming out 2017. Nintendo of Europe said the same thing. It shows a lot more confidence than before, where we just had a Japanese date with no American date given. And mm. I do think it is possible with like what we were saying before, with how a lot of the staff that worked on Xenoblade Chronicles didn't work on X, and how they got like new composers to come in for X, a lot of new talent in general, and a lot of these people it was just like, you know, what are you even doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> so it makes sense with these two games being in development at the same time that it could come out very soon after X did. It's just... Prove me wrong, Nintendo. Really do, because your track record leads me to not believe. Because X got delayed by a year twice. Yeah. It would be 
insane if this holiday we had both Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Super Mario Odyssey and whatever else Nintendo, like maybe a Pokemon game <laughs> this this winter. That would be insane. <laughs> yeah. I am not holding my breath. No. Just personally. <laughs> I will you... be as much of a negative Nancy as I want on this. Dude, dude, I remember before, before we saw what Breath of the Wild looked like at the first D3 it was ever shown off from, you were saying before we even saw that video that it was going to come out next console generation. <laughs> like you said that. <laughs> that is exactly like, what I said. Immediately when they announced it, I was like, no, nah, we're not getting this, this gen. There's it, no it was way. Onuma talking in front of a green screen. Like before the, he even snapped his fingers and the footage came up, you were already saying this is coming out next console generation. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like calling me out on it too. You're like, no. Uh, technically, no. technically, you're both right since it's coming out on the Wii. Wii U and and the Switch, <laughs> so okay. But we don't know if they're coming out simultaneously. Right? They are. We do. Wait. Oh, yes. we do. Yeah, they're yeah. simultaneous. Oh, where release. was I? Seriously? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, okay. It's the same day well. release. They've said very little about the Wii U version. All we know is Wii U version is 720, Switch version is 1080. They're both coming out on the same day. Switch version is 900. Oh, 900, okay. Yeah, and they're coming out the same day, and apparently the audio is going to be a little better on the Switch version than the Wii U version. There's also well. the fact that the Wii U version requires a 3 gigabyte mandatory update for the game to even run. <laughs> yeah. Which, wow. hey, as Xenoblade fans and dealing with X and all that's update packs, three gigs is nothing. <laughs> 20 gigabytes to make oh X God. run well. I had to get an external so I could get that to an run. An external. Yes. Sorry, third time I've done that this call. Yeah, uh, I, I, have a, I have a two terabyte external for my Wii U, so I've never had trouble with that, though. But yeah, I a tried 20 to hold gigabyte off. install for Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah, so three gigs, whatever. <laughs> Uh, well, any final things that you guys want to bring up about Xenoblade Chronicles 2 that you haven't said yet, or stuff that we missed? Actually, on that note, I'm very happy this game is going to be on a cartridge, because Xenoblade always felt kind of too big for optical speeds, so mm. I'm really happy that that's the case, because the load times in Xenoblade Chronicles 3D are, like, leaps and bounds ahead of the Wii version. Oh, wow. I didn't realize. I've never played the I never the really 3D thought about version. that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy that it's on cartridge. It should run pretty well. I, I wonder how much of an install is going to be required on the Switch version, but again, maybe it's all on that cartridge. It's, it's really, like, we know so little about the Switch, even to this point, uh, exactly how that's going to work. It's it's going to be something to see, but load time should be pretty good. And you can take it anywhere. Huh, that'll be the best. It'll be, like, that will be the best thing about the game completely, is just that I can take it everywhere, because <laughs> I'm going to need to. It'll also be nice that the common person will actually finish the game this time around because <laughs> just so many people I know say that they want to finish Xenoblade games, though, but just having enough time at home to play them. Yeah. So now you can just, while you're taking a trip or on the bus or wherever, just bring it out and play for a little bit and slowly make that progress. <laughs> just bring a battery pack so you don't die in the middle of a boss battle. That is also Pro true. Pro tip. <laughs> very good. Very I'm good happy point. happy my car has an AC adapter. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to be driving at the same time, Emil. <laughs> oh, no. I, okay, no. I just mean like <laughs> no. I can have it charging while I'm driving and oh. then while I'm out places I can play. That's what I mean. Oh, okay. Would be nice if there was Street Pass, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it must be devastating oh, for you sad. that Street Pass is gone. I know. I, I'm going to carry my 3DS around with me as long as I'm still getting Street Passes at conventions, though. But, like, it, it kind of hurts, though, because I still haven't 100 percent at Street Pass Me Plaza. There's still a very few things I have not done yet. <laughs> you cannot stop until you do all that. <laughs> yeah. It'll be a sad day when you only get 10 Street Passes through an entire convention weekend. Mm. Oof, or even less than that. That just sounds weird. It'll only get it reminds me of one. the Sea Gear in like Pokemon Black and White too, where one of the achievements is play with 100 people at the same time, even though it came out like a year and a half into the 3DS's lifespan. So why would anybody be on Sea Gear when Street Pass exists? So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. But on the whole, though, I am really excited for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It gives me an excellent excuse to start playing through the original and experiencing that, and I, yes. I cannot wait to finally see more, because to give it uh, for you guys and for those of you who've played Xenoblade Chronicles, I stopped for whatever reason when, uh, God, it feels like a spoiler to say this. Yeah, I wouldn't say it though, but... 
around were... Colony Six. Yes. Like I had just oh, been introduced. You were still early. I was just introduced to Colony Six and the events that happened around that, and not. I know you rebuild Colony Six at some point. I didn't even get started on that. So around that time. But I was also doing everything possible that I could do. Like, I would just go, like, time would shift and I would just try to be like, oh, what's going on now? What's going on now? I was truly invested in trying to see what, what was happening. But it also, because of that, didn't make as much progress. <laughs> so Too invested. To give you an idea of just, like, how, like, nothing you've seen yet, like... I think I 100%ed Colony 6 in, like, episode 106 of my Let's Play. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that was when I 100%ed that area. That's... No, that you sounds about right. completionist. <laughs> Ain't that the truth, so... Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, but... I'm getting. I, I know you two are as well, since you're even oh, bigger yeah. fans than than myself. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very excited. It's, it's amazing to have this... First year, or at least second year, into the Switch's lifespan. Awesome stuff. I've said it before, I think people are really selling it short, though, because, like, minus a new Pikmin game and a new Super Smash Brothers game, the first eight months of the Switch is, like, the equivalent of the first three years of the Wii U. Exactly. It's and impressive. that is massive. Yeah. So... Now we just have to hope that there's actual stuff to play in the second and third year of the Switch, <laughs> now that they front-loaded everything. <laughs> I've noticed that there's always, like, that one year of a Nintendo console where they, like, don't release, like, anything. Like, it was 2008 for the Wii. Like, mm -hmm. 2008, 2009. Like, after Brawl came out, it was just nothing for a year. Yeah. Well, that's all anyone was playing was Brawl. <laughs> that is a good point. But we'll see. I'm, I'm hopeful I'm about the Switch and uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And uh, I think that covers it for our Xenoblade Chronicles 2 discussion, so thank you for watching. And if you liked this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. And uh, Emil, where can they find you at? Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Chugga Condor, two gs 2 A's. I'm getting better. <laughs> slowly. <laughs> slowly. What about you, Masay? I'm everywhere. I'm on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Twitch. Do streams and lots of gaming things and everything nerdy, so... It's fun times. Definitely check them out, and of course, stay tuned to Game Explained for more Orange Xenoblade and other things gaming too. Till next time, bye.